What's up guys, this is Forrest Knight and welcome to IDev Journey episode 13. And today we're going to go over a bit about the retro calculator again. This time we're actually going to do the exercise. So, and the exercise as Mark explains in lecture 57, enhancing the calculator. We implement a launch screen and we implement a clear button because before if we were to just type in our calculator, we would type in 2 plus 2 equals 4 and there's no way to clear it after that. So we implement both of those in this video and I'm going to send us on over to the computer and you'll see how the video speeds up and whatnot. I'm not actually doing it. I've already done it. I'm going to voice over right now just so you don't get confused. All right, let's get to it. So we're here at the screen. We already have a working calculator. We're just going to implement the launch screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to Retro Calculator. Make sure you're in the General tab as you should be and you're going to scroll down to Launch Screen File within App Icons and Launch Images. Choose the Launch Screen Storyboard and you'll see over here Launch Screen Storyboard and you have a blank view controller. Don't get this confused with the main storyboard. As you can see we already had that and Mark provided us with these image files that we're going to use in order to make the launch screen. So we're going to download those and what I'm doing now is dragging them on into our assets folder. As you can see all of them are there, one times image. And we're going to have to create image views on this view controller. First we're going to start off with the big background. We're going to set our constraints zero to each side so it doesn't matter what what screen it's on, it'll always stretch across the whole entire screen. And we're going to go up and select image and we're going to select the background. We're going to select the launch background and not aspect fit but aspect fill so it fills the whole entire thing. And then we're going to create this little, these rocks that are at the bottom. Same thing, image view, there are the constraints on the left, right, and bottom. And I realized while doing this, or I realized, and I realized after doing all this that I missed a few restraints, but or constraints, but we'll go over that once I actually do it in this video. So, and I also set a height constraint because I don't want that fluctuating. And we made that launch ground, which are the rocks, and we aspect filled that as well so it could stretch as needed. All of this is just image view. Another image view, we're going to throw the robot on there. This time we're going to aspect fit. So we just want this to be one size across all screens, so we're going to throw constraints on to keep this image the same width and the same height across all, across all screens. We're also going to throw a constraint in there in order to keep it closer to the top. And now we throw in our retro calc image. All of this is the same. You throw in all of the images, you line them up to how you want them, and you throw the constraints in there. And make sure you select the correct aspect fit, aspect fill, whatever you need. And as you can see here, some of the constraints aren't really working. Well, I didn't implement the proper constraints. I need to implement horizontally and container constraints to everything that I wanted horizontal, which is retro calc and the robot. Now, it doesn't look perfect on the iPad, but I mean, it's, it's as close as you're going to get and with something just so simple. These are just like the examples that Mark gave us, so I just stuck with what he wanted. Instead of making it a little bit bigger on the iPad, I just kept it the same size all across the board. And as you can see, here's our launch screen. We can go back and say we click on the app. Boom. You saw the launch screen click there real quick, and now you're able to use your calculator. And that's really it for the launch screen, it looks, at least for this launch screen. You know, there are some launch screens where you do animations, like Uber, if you open that up, the launch screen it has animations but this one's so simple you just we just threw in four images we made sure the constraints were correct we tested them on each device of course you would want to do thorough tests if this was going to market but for our purpose we just used the simulators or not even the simulators we viewed it in Xcode and it it aligned properly and we tested it in the simulator with this with the iPhone SE and it works and that's really all it is to that now that we did that, we have to go implement the clear button. This took a little bit longer, so it's going to take a little bit longer now, but that's okay because there's a lot more to it instead of just putting four images on the screen and making sure they're aligned. So let's get to that one. So instead of dragging in an image view, what we're going to do is drag in a button. And we're not going to make it look too pretty. We're just going to bring it on over here under what we have currently. We're going to take out the word button 
And in background, we're going to put in our background image, which is the clear image, the clear button image. Make sure you throw the image in background instead of image, which is located right above background. Because if you put in image, if I remember correctly, it didn't line up inside the actual box properly. Uh, you can test it out for yourself, do whatever works for you, but background works for me, so I'm going to stick with that. And with this, it didn't really change with aspect fit, aspect fill, so I just kept it on aspect fit, uh, it seemed to work. We open up our assistant editor and create an IV action for on clear press. Before we did on equal press, on add press, and so on. This time we're going to do on clear press. And this first time around I didn't do it correctly, but we're going to go through what I did incorrectly just so you can see anyway. I wasn't exactly sure what to do. I didn't know if I needed to create another case or if I needed to create an if statement or what exactly I needed to. Maybe I needed to create another var, but I realized soon after that I didn't need to do any of those things. I tried to match the syntax of the other IB actions by making it dot empty, just like above you can see dot add, dot subtract. I connected the IB action to the actual clear button. And as you can see, I didn't set the constraints properly on my clear button, so you can't really even see it. But I can still click it, and it, it, it doesn't work. So <laughs> that obviously didn't work. So here I'm setting the constraints and whatnot, and I'm going to fast forward a bit to where I'm actually doing this correctly. So I thought I shouldn't need this process operation after doing a bit of research. I can just, whenever the button is pressed, I can just make result zero, but I also need to create or make the operation zero and I need to make the running number zero as well. And I didn't declare the proper things. I put an integer into a string and I put a string into an integer or something like that. So make sure you always use the right things or else it just simply won't work. Before I realized what I'd done, I tried to change any object to UI button, but that wasn't the case. That, that's not what I needed, so I just changed it back. And Okay, the string wasn't supposed to be an integer. It was supposed to be operation.empty, as you can see. So all of those are proper syntax. Still don't have the right constraint on my clear button, but I can press it better. And it still doesn't work because I forgot one thing. But before we get into that, I realized just in that right there is, you know, what we set up is left hand value, operation, right hand value, operation, which is equals, which so two plus two equals four. If you just do plus two equals, it crashes because we didn't throw in anything to, to counteract that. So back into this, I took out the operation I saw up here out label dot text equals running number and that seemed to fit in here so I added that in tested my app and sure enough it cleared it all out however it didn't clear out the actual operation because I took out what I had in before so I need to put that back in basically what it was doing was just clearing out the visual, the result. It wasn't doing anything about the current operation, so it was still adding and subtracting to the previous result. Now, with the current operation being made empty with pressing of the clear button, we do seven plus five equals 12, we clear it out, and we do two, okay, I crashed it, but I think I tested again. Before I tested, I decided to set my constraints in order to make the clear button not go off screen and make it so big. I just need to make it match with everything else. And now we're really going to test it. So we do 5 times 7 equals 35. We clear that out. And we do 7 plus, five, 7 plus 1, which should equal 8, just like it did. And I crashed it again just to get another example for the video, honestly. So as we can see, it clears out everything that we wanted to clear out and that's exactly how you do the clear button. Of course this calculator isn't perfect. You can barely do anything. All you can do is add, subtract, multiply, and divide. But that's not really the point. We're not trying to do exponents or parentheses or anything like that. We're just trying to learn iOS development and we learn math logic. We learn how to use values, how to use our operators in order to add those values together and get it equal. 
we learned how to connect the UI to our back end, so our front end to our back end, we're able to connect that very easily in Xcode, might I add. Of course, there are some flaws, like if you do divided by two equals, it crashes. Instead of just saying error, instead of just clearing that out and basically making someone retype it. But what can you ask for? We learned a lot during this retro calculator. All right, so let's see what I have written down in my trusty handy dandy notebook. All right, so everything I wanted to go over, I've already talked about. You know, talking about the left and right hand values, about the crashing, about about how you can take an, a big part is how you can take, how you can write your IB action out, creates that little bubble next to it that you can click and drag onto your UI like we did. And that was something that was awesome. Instead of actually dragging from your storyboard into your view controller, you can write your code and then, you know, your IB action and then drag that out to your button. I figured you could do something like that because I didn't think there's only one way to do it, but this way is very convenient. Of course, it's easier to just click and drag and it writes out basically your IB action for you, but it's very nice to know you can just go into your code, you can type in, say, just like just like this sample, we already had four of the same IB action functions basically. We just need to create a fifth one, so I just typed that up, framed it off of what I just had, and then dragged it to the proper button, and I think that was really, really convenient. So IDEV Journey 14 is going to consist of one of two things. So the first being the next exercise, which is exercise auto layout. So basically, I'm pretty sure uh, what auto layout, what this is supposed to do is it doesn't matter what device or whether you have it portrait or landscape, the layout adjusts to everything. So basically, if you have an iPad at landscape, it'll look similar, you know, within reason to having it on portrait on an iPhone SE or something like that. I think that's what we're going for here, and I don't know if that's a whole video worthy, but uh, if you want to see that, so let's do this. If you want to see both of those, let's get at least 10 likes on this video. If we don't get at least 10 likes on this video, then I'll probably end up skipping over exercise auto layout and not throwing it into IDEV Journey 14, and I'll just do IDEV Journey 14 Party Rock Mansion. Or if you want to like the video but you don't want to see auto layout, like the video and leave me a comment and be like, look, I liked it, but I'd, I'd rather just move on to Party Rock Mansion instead of seeing you do the do the auto layout. Which would, it would be a lot similar to this, just kind of a fast forward and me voicing over it because I don't want to sit here forever and I know y'all don't want to sit here forever just kind of going over every little piece and maybe me trying to figure stuff out up here. So we would do it similar to that. It wouldn't be very boring. So to recap, 10 plus likes, I would do both. Whether it's one or two videos, I don't know, but it'll happen. Otherwise, it'll just have to be a surprise to y'all. It'll be a surprise to me as well. So that concludes this video, and until next time, have a good one.